Joining us right now to talk more about the Fed's challenges in light of the coronavirus and other economic headwinds is Jim O'Sullivan. He's chief U.S. macroeconomist at TD Securities. Also, our very own senior economics reporter, Steve Leisman. And Steve, let's start with you first. What, what did you hear in those headlines that jumped out at you uh, the most? So Powell repeated the uh, phrase that they've been using, which is they would change policy if there's a material reassessment of the outlook. Think about everything else he said in context of that one statement. What would it take for a change? Well, a material reassessment. Not hearing that, because we're hearing two different things. First is that there is um, a new challenge from the coronavirus. Trade problems have receded, but other problems remain. None of this seems to amount to the idea that there's a material reassessment because the economy is resilient. And we talked about this yesterday, that there are uh, several economists who have brought down their outlook for the first quarter, but see a bounce back in the second quarter and say, you know what? You take the jobs numbers together with some of the bounce back in the business surveys and the U.S. economy, in the words of Powell, is resilient in face of the changes that are uh, the challenges that it has. So there are new, new changes, new challenges out there, but he sees the economy as resilient, therefore no material reassessment of the outlook. Jim, how about you? Uh, obviously, he, he gives a head nod to the coronavirus, but it's, it's kind of hard to know exactly what the impact will be at this point. Yeah, well, he certainly has to sound empathetic, of course, and open-minded in terms of what happens from here. But I think at this point, the presumption um, certainly in the equity market when you look at how resilient it continues to be, and also at the Fed when you listen to various Fed officials, is that the impact of the coronavirus will be fairly modest and, I'd say, more important uh, temporary. So even if it does affect our first quarter number a bit, I mean, it's going to be a lot less than China for sure in terms of the impact on Q1, but if the virus peaks in the next month or so and output is coming back by the second quarter, then ultimately this should not have a, a major impact on the trend in which case it ultimately shouldn't affect monetary policy significantly. Do you think that the current trajectory is most likely to stay in place? Um, we think ultimately we're going to get more slippage in growth and the employment numbers, and the Fed will come back and ease again by the end of the year. Why, but this, why do you think we get more slippage in growth? Well, we're not convinced that trade uncertainty has disappeared. Um, domestic political uncertainty is probably only going to rise. And I think more fundamentally, while it's true that expansions don't die of old age, as is said, I think there are some signs of strains when you look at the profit numbers, particularly in the national accounts. It looks like profit margins have been slipping as the tight labor market has been eating into margins because labor costs have picked up a little bit at least. And over time, I think we will see more slowing in corporate spending, employment, as, hey, as well as CapEx staying on the soft side. Be Becky, there is a bit of a problem here, and it's not one that's immediate in front of us now, but there is a reckoning coming between the Fed and the markets here. I'm looking at the July futures, and I see... Uh, according to the uh, Refinitiv numbers here, a 57 percent chance of a July rate cut. I'm not sure that what Powell said today is supportive of that. It doesn't necessarily lean against it. If the coronavirus gets worse, if some of the things that Jim talked about uh, do pan out uh, t toward the, the, the worst case scenario, um, then that may be true. But we do have this rate cut built in. I'm not sure how much that is uh, what is one of the things that's underpinning equities here. But at some point, and, and it's not that far away, in the next month or two, the Fed's going to have to guide the market or the market's going to have to come off where it's, uh, it's priced right now for future well, Fed rate cuts here. Steve, I was, I was actually going to ask you, if the Fed did take action, <clears throat> what do you think it would look like? you think it would be rate cuts or some other sort of stimulus? It, 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 ballooning the balance sheet again. No, well, I mean, the, the Fed is sort of increasing the balance sheet, though it insists that it is not for, uh, to stimulate the economy. Uh, I think the Fed is far from that, what you're talking about, which is a, another QE round. I think it still has several cuts remaining at this range of one and a half to one and three quarters percent. There could be additional cuts that it does uh, undertake. It's important to note that Powell did say that he sees inflation moving back up to 2 percent in the next several months. And that's important uh, because P Powell says that some of the older numbers are going to drop out. So this imperative to get the inflation number back up to its goal uh, is going to be gone. So that's going to be another a knock against the idea of coming rate cuts. I'm informed by uh, the interview I did a week or so ago with Mary Daly from San Francisco. She said she's not ready to cut rates. She thinks policy is appropriate. That's another sort of buzzword the Fed has been using. So it, it's okay now to have this dissonance. As we get closer to the summer, where the market has this rate cut built in, then there's going to have to be that reckoning. Actually, uh, Steve, I would, I would add to that, that I think the way to look at markets right now is markets are always kind of probability-weighted averages of the possibilities. And when you listen to the Fed right now, they're clearly comfortable with policy as it is, and they may well sit here for a while. 
But if they're going to move in the next 12 months, it's clearly down. And the context here, of course, is they're increasingly worried that inflation's too low. And they're doing the review, which is supposed to conclude by mid-year. But effectively, they've told us already that they've adopted some form of average inflation targeting, which basically means they probably want to see inflation go to at least 2.5% before they tighten again. So in terms of the possibilities over the next 12 months, either they sit here or they ease. So markets are reflecting certainly the risk tilted toward easing. Even if they don't actually pull the trigger I, by I, July, there's clearly Jim, much more of a risk of easing than tightening. I don't, I don't disagree with that at all. But, but Becky, if I could just ask Jim, Jim, could you give us your first quarter number and how both Boeing and the coronavirus have changed your outlook there? Because we've been sort of keeping a running survey. We've got one, two for an average. I just want to know where you yeah. stand, Jim. Um, We've got 1.6, oh, and we haven't made any specific stronger. adjustment for coronavirus, so there is an argument for taking a few tenths off. I mean, that does allow specifically for four tenths from Boeing as a drag, although in the other direction, you are getting a bit of a bounce back in auto production. Well, the and end and of the that's GM's what I was going to say. I mean, you're thinking that things are going to continue to weaken through the year, but if the coronavirus turns out to be contained, if Boeing's uh, 737 MAX is put back up, how quickly could that change? Yeah. I mean, could we be looking at a stronger economy heading into the back half of the year? Q2 should be better than Q1. I mean, I think we've got 1.6 in the first quarter, 2.1 in the second, and then maybe starting to slip to kind of 1.8, 1.5. But I would say even more important from a Fed watching perspective is what happens to the labor numbers. Yeah. If employment numbers are slip, slip, slipping, that's when you start worrying about recession risks again. But, Becky, I would also watch the business surveys. I want to see if this trade deal does bring back business confidence, could potentially right. bring back CapEx. I well, think that could be an important development That's what we heard from Kate Rogers this morning from the NFIB, <clears throat> the Small Business um, right. Association. That they, they still are looking more confident than they were at the end of the year. So we'll see. I think that's important to watch.